Dan Budrum's interview with Jasmine Brown or Jazzy here on the right, who is Cam Newton's girlfriend, Shan was talking to Jazzy about submission. The interview went viral. A lot of women and Black women in particular took issue with the things she was saying because she made it seem like she she's selflessly giving herself to Cam and submitting herself to Cam without getting anything in return, which I think is total bullshit. I think she's getting a lot in return, you guys. I think she's getting a lot in return. I think she's on here capping. And when I say a lot, I mean primarily money and status from a rich man. I think that's what she gets in return. And in my opinion, this interview was simply a performance for Cap Newton, okay? Or Cam Newton, I, I call the man Cap. Cam Newton. And she was giving the illusion of being completely selfless for him. And I think she did that for him and also the women listening so that she can look like the submissive girlfriend that does anything for her man. And, you know, I'm just so this and I'm just so that. And so she's either trying to get a ring or secure a bag, right? That's what I think. And in my opinion, this was just a total finesse. And I'm just really shocked that that many Black women did not see through this. It, you know, it's also funny hearing broke men on the internet co-sign Jazzy and use her saying she's all submissive to her man to tell Black women how we need to be more submissive in all this when she'd actually never be submissive to, submissive to those men because they don't have enough money. Isn't that interesting, right? So the finesse worked. Now she has all these men out here, these broke men that she would never date, that she would never submit to, <laughs> right? Talking about this is how you need to be, Black women. And this is why, because y'all bitches ain't submissive. This is why we go on to white women. This is why we do it. Yeah, yeah. So... She's just, she's appealing to that, right? Now, I will say this. I do think she's setting herself up to be like a perpetual girlfriend or a placeholder because wasn't Cam with his baby mama for, for years and years and he didn't marry her? He has like seven kids. So doing all of this public performing for a boyfriend that ain't even talking about you publicly, not that I know of, right? I just don't think it's a smart move, but I do think that she's getting more out of it than she's putting on. That's my point here. So let's listen to a little bit of what she had to say. And it's interesting you say that, me first. I'm not even like that. I think that it seems like that because of how I hustle. But even when I hustle, it's not even for me. I think. OK, OK, we already got a pause. So who are you hustling for if it's not primarily for you? Who who are you hustling for, girl, if it's not primarily for you? You're not doing, you not just doing that for everybody else. I, I call bullshit on this. I'm sorry. I think love and submission is a tailored fit. It's not a one size fits all. So I can only tell you what, what it means to me. Now for me, it's complete selflessness. But I find joy in being your rest. And it shouldn't be conditional. I do my duty joyfully regardless of what is happening to and for me, I like to give, I like to allow my person to lead. They know, especially like when it translates in the bedroom, I like to feel dominated. If you. Okay. And let, you know, just let me say this. Um, I can kind of relate to that. I like to be a little bit dominated during sex too. You know, is it okay? Maybe I'm problematic. I don't know. Am I a misogynist? I, I, I don't know. What are y'all going to call me? What are y'all going to diagnose me with? Because I say I like to be dominated in the, during in the bedroom. Like, I, I just, what, what, what do I have for all of you YouTube psychologists? I don't know. I like that too. So <laughs> what I'm saying is I can relate to that. So if that is something she enjoys, right? And Cam Newton is doing that, that's something she, that's one thing that she's getting in return. Okay. Let's continue. If you have a long day and you fight in the world, you will never come back and fight me. You will never come back and walk into a space that is not welcoming you. To okay, and I, I oh, look, I, I understand wanting to be, you know, peace for your man or whatever, but I do think it's unrealistic to say that your man will never come home to you not feeling your best, right? 
So I get the impression, and I could be wrong. Somebody can tell me in the chat. I could be wrong, but I, I get the impression that this relationship is very new, right? Because nobody feels or acts pleasant all the time. No woman does that, no matter how submissive they are. It's just not realistic, y'all. It's not. Some, it could be enabling. You know, and someone told me one time, they're like, you're enabling him. And I told him how that made me feel. And he was like, of course, they're going to say that. They don't have nobody doing that for them. And OK, I just how do you guys in interpret that when she said they don't have anybody do it, doing it for them? Is she talking about he said that they don't have a woman doing what she's doing for him or they don't have a man doing what he's doing for her? How did you guys, inter you know, because if it's the latter, then that means he's obviously doing something for her. Like I was talking about this with one of my friends behind the scenes, and I, I think she gets an allowance. I, I think she gets maybe a weekly allowance. Or am I reaching? <laughs> but that's what it's kind of giving. Oh, Simply Bree says, I took it both ways. Okay, so what they're doing for each other, basically. Because I, I didn't know how to take that, right? I don't know. Let's continue. How did it make you feel? It made me feel like maybe I am. There was a time where, you know, women needed men for everything. We couldn't even open up a bank account, you know? And now it's like women are really in their bag where they're like, I'm, I have my own business. I'm doing this. I don't need, I don't need a man for nothing. Like, basically, like, can I be frank? Like, I'm a, I don't need a nigga for shit. I don't. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And <laughs> now this is a classic gold digger finesse, y'all. And if it's not gold digging, hypergamous, however you want to phrase it, right? I have my own money. I don't need a nigga for shit, right? But money is still a very much a priority for you, honey. And you want a man who makes more than you, much more than you, and can take care of you, even if you can take care of yourself. Most women want, want that. Most women want that, right? But see, she has to publicly act like it's not a really big deal to her to not seem like a gold digger, right? So y'all just need a recognized game when you see it, okay? And again, I, I, I just, I do think she's a, maybe a giving person, a naturally cooperative person who accommodates her man. I think she knows how to play the game is what I'm saying, right? Because this, this shit is a game, y'all. It is, right? But I don't think she's giving unconditional submission or cooperation. I think she's willingly giving it and accommodating to Cam in exchange for his wealth and status. That's what I think. Okay. You know, and I can say those words, but I want one. My relationship with my partner is very egalitarian. Like we're equals. Mm. So you speak on, you're like, you tell him the things that you need. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the things that you feel like you deserve, you'll say that? A hundred percent. How will you say that? <laughs> I need you to step up in these areas. Mm. I need to not worry about this. Stations. How does he, does he receive it well? What does a submit? Y'all, this is more performance. Oh, you tell him how you feel. You tell him what you need. Oh my God, you do that. I'm so, and so it's like she said, oh, I'm so submissive. I would never do that. Like it's such a performance. Girl, she probably got a good allowance after this, y'all. She probably got a good check from Cam Newton. And you know, I, I see like some of the comments under the videos about this. And like some of the women in the comments are like, oh, he's he's unemployed. He he got money, y'all. This man, I looked up, I looked it up. He's worth 75 mil. Even with those seven kids, even if he's not working right now, he has enough to break her off a very good allowance every week or every month or whatever. Come on now, y'all. This is acting. She's an actress. I can't believe y'all didn't pick up on this shit. I don't know, maybe because y'all call me a gold digger all the time. Maybe because I I'm I'm wired that way so I can see I can see it I know game when I see it come on y'all this if woman do for her man everything and look let me say this if she is being super submissive like she says and she's not you know questioning him or telling him how she feels again it's it's to it to uh put her in uh, at the advantage right because we always say, what do we always say when we talk about hypergamy and this level up stuff, right? Listen more than you speak, right? It's always better when you know more about a man than he knows about you. So if she, even if she is not telling, saying how she feels to, to Cam, right? 
and she's not um, expressing her true feelings or not, you know, telling him when she's upset and all this, it's absolutely 100% to benefit her the most. And if she's not doing that now because the relationship is so new, right? Let's just say she's not gaming, right? And let's just say she's, she's, this is really who she is, right? That will likely change down the line and either he'll accommodate her needs or they'll break up or he'll cheat or something like that. Cause this cannot, this cannot continue like this and it'd be real is what I'm saying. Let's continue. What does that mean? <laughs> you know, like packing his bag, unpacking his bag, um, just making sure all the things that he wants. And like I, I pretty much read his mind. So it's like, if I know you, and I study you, like I know how you are in the morning. I know how you are about midday. I know when you're in this mood, what you need. Like before you can ever ask me for something, I'm already on it. I mean, he's spoiled. And you know, when I talk to my girlfriends about it, they're always like, oh, how are you guys doing? And I'm just like, girl, he's rotten. I'm like, he's spoiled rotten. Like he's rotten, but I love that. Like I want him to be that. I think my biggest flex is how I treat my man. You know what I mean? And my biggest flex should be how I treat myself, which is, so it's kind of fucked up. <laughs> it's kind of messed up. What are you getting from all that you're getting? Okay, listen. Um, I don't think anything is wrong with packing a man's bag or catering to his needs or uh, observing him enough so that you know what he wants and giving him that if, if you're getting something in return, right? Again, some women are just naturally accommodating to men. And I'm definitely a pleaser as well in a relationship. So I can relate, right? As long as I'm getting something in return <laughs> I do like to see the person I'm with happy as long as he makes me happy first so it does have to be mutual right um and I don't necessarily subscribe to the idea that you can only be accommodating to a man if he's your if he's your husband but women should also have incentives that are exclusive to marriage if that's what she wants if you want to be married don't move in with him as a girlfriend and play full-on housewife, full-on domestic housewife without that commitment. But again, she could just be playing the game, right? Um, but going over to cook for a man every now and then is one thing. But moving in and cooking and cleaning and doing laundry every day, it's only going to make him feel like he doesn't need to marry you to get those kind of benefits, to get wife benefits, right? Um, and also doing these public performances for a man while he's not claiming you like that, that's also not something you do while having a girlfriend title. It's just not, that's not the right, that's not the title for that, right? Men, men do to you what you allow. And if you give them an inch, they'll take a mile, right? And I do believe Jazzy when she says she's a pleaser and that's fine. But I also think that she's doing everything she's doing way too soon and for the wrong person because of his track, his track re record. His track record is bad. And if he does marry her, it'll likely be after she puts some boundaries in place and stop doing what she's doing until she gets a ring. If he does marry her, that's what she's going to have to do. Men can talk all this shit about how they want submissive women. They like women with boundaries, y'all. They like women who, who tell them no sometimes. And if you listen to this, this um, podcast, the whole thing, even Shan's husband said that. He was like, I, you know, I couldn't be with a complete sub submissive woman because it would be boring. A lot of men feel that way. So let's continue. What are you asking for in return? You know, it's interesting. And you saw my reaction when I was like, you say that? You asked for that? You know what I mean? I think that. I have gotten better at saying the things that I need, but if I don't get it the first time, I don't like to say it again. So would you do So here she is later on in an interview, two, three minutes later, saying that she's getting better at saying what she needs. But earlier she said, oh, oh, you tell him how you feel? And how does he take that? So it's like, I'm just not buying that she's completely selfless and she never stands up for herself. And she never says how she feels. I'm not buying it. So would you do what you're doing for a broke dude? What What do you call broke? <laughs> Can't, requires you. you see, what do you call broke? She paused like that because she's thinking of a good answer that doesn't make her sound like a gold digger. I just want y'all to know what y'all are listening to. Your financial support as no. well. No. 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 
<laughs> this shit is hilarious. Oh, no. I mean, I, I think to be broke, you can be still some, a great lover, still very romantic, still very emotionally supportive. But I'm just like asking. But about I wouldn't this. even know that. I wouldn't even know that he's all those things. Because it's, I think there's a lot of people who are financially stable who are broke minded and I can't get down with that either. So let me just clarify the question. <laughs> so again, classic finesse, right? She said she wouldn't do what she's doing for a broke man. She did say it. She admitted it. But she softened it, right, by following up with, oh, well, but you can have money and be broke minded. <laughs> and look, I'm not saying she isn't being sincere. I do think that for her and most women, I do think that having a man with money isn't the only thing that matters. I say this all the time. But my point is, I think she's downplaying how much Cam's money plays a role in her quote unquote submission. OK. Um, uh, Christmas tree says this is not submission. This is servitude. I don't think it's servitude. I think it's game. That's what I think. I don't think she. this is servitude at all. I think she's getting a lot in return. I think she's getting allowance. I think she's getting a monthly or a good weekly allowance, a real good one. A real good one. She ain't doing this shit for free, y'all. She's not. She. This is not, you know, selfish, unconditional submission. It's That's not what this is. A lot of you guys read her totally wrong. What are the requirements from a man to bring to Jazzy in order <laughs> to get this level of love from you? Um, I think it's how you make me feel. Um, I have to feel safe with you emotionally. I have to, you have to excite me. Like, And I do think she's telling the truth here. I think, you know, she probably feels some sort of safety with, with Cam, but that's after the money thing. It's after that. I am a submissive. So like in a way, my love language and sex is like you. I like for you to tell me what to do. Some people can interpret submissiveness as like anything goes like I'll put up with anything. No, no way. I mean, like. I think anything goes for sure if you're comfortable with the person because I'm doing shit I never did before. I'm just and again, she's saying here that no, not anything goes. You have to be comfortable with whatever he's asking. So her submission is conditional, y'all. It's like she's saying it, but she's not saying it, you know? It is conditional, unlike what she said earlier. She's lying. <laughs> like, I would have never done this, but you know what? I'm comfortable with this person and I feel safe. Do you have an example? Anal. Do you do it for you or do you do it for them? I do it for him because for me, I'm not at a place where I like it yet. I had We had one successful time where I was like, okay, you know, I my butt okay. and, it's interesting. and I, I listened to the whole podcast make sure you listen to it go support shan it was a pretty good podcast but um on the part where she said how she's she doesn't like anal but she's doing it because he likes it a lot of women scoffed at that but honestly i don't think that's uncommon people and especially women do things sexually that they aren't really that into to please the person that they're with like i was a long time ago, I had met this guy and he said that he doesn't particularly like oral sex. He doesn't particularly like going down on a woman, but he does it because he knows that women like it. Right. Um, but I think women especially do things sexually that they aren't really into to please the person that they're with. And I'll be honest with you. I've also been with someone who liked, you know, tossing salad, if you will. OK, he liked to put a finger up there. And, you know, that's not something I prefer dur during sex. Um, but it turned me on because he got off on it, right? And I was getting my needs met in other areas of the relationship as well. So um, even with that, I personally don't think it's selfless because it turned me on that he was turned on. I get something from that, right? I get something knowing that you're turned on doing something to me, right? That you like to do. So again, I just think this whole... I. I I get absolutely nothing in return. I think it was being grossly exaggerated here. Christmas Tree said, that's a really good point, Chrissy. I legit thought she needed an abuse hotline. But you're right. This is probably game. Had me fooled too, LOL. Yeah, uh, come on. This girl, and look, maybe she does need therapy. You know what I'm saying? Maybe she does. But to sit there and act like you're not getting anything in return and it's selfless and it's unconditional, it, that's cap. It's cap. 
Now, there's an old video of Jazzy that went semi-viral, and I want to play this as well. Now, this was before this interview, okay? Hey, besties. I know I'm going to offend some people, but trust me, this is coming out of love. This message is for all the pick-me's. Pick-me's are women who try to do everything right just so a man can choose me. Yeah, cut that shit out, because I'm going to keep it real with you. Men already know what they want in a woman and who they want. But if you're so nurturing and you're an asset and it's not you, they'll never tell you to stop doing what you're doing because it's beneficial. And I don't want to hear none of that shit like, oh, I'm just a nice person. I'm genuinely like that. Well, bitch, you're going to genuinely get played. No, it's just that I'm just naturally like that. Like the shit I do for him is natural. Y'all, isn't this what she was just saying on the Shan interview? I'm naturally submissive. This is just who I am. You know, I just, I like to please my man and pleasing my man is the biggest flex. Like she turned into the pick me she was complaining about, right? That's why I said this is a this is a game, y'all. She finessed everybody. She finessed black women. She finessed the men listening. She finessed all y'all. And this shit is just hilarious to me. It's just hilarious. And your natural ass is gonna get played. If you are making a man's life easier, i.e., cooking, cleaning, providing pussy whenever he didn't she just say? She she liked to. Well, I don't think I added that clip in. But in in the in the interview, she said, "Yeah, I like to cook for my man. I like to see my man eating my food." And he wants, and he's giving you the minimum. He's never going to do more, and he's never going to tell you to stop because it's beneficial to him. Why the hell she ain't taking her own advice? Him. No history in the niggadom ever has a man been like, "Oh, stop doing all this stuff. It's stop making my life easier." I I, I don't look at you like that. They gonna kick their motherfucking feet up and enjoy these perks without doing no work. Now, to be fair, um, she did say that he has to bring something to the table. So what I'm saying is this: I don't think she changed her mind. I just think that whatever he's bringing, it's worth her getting up there pretending and running game on everybody. Okay, because she sounded totally different here than she did in that interview. So all I'm saying is that the allowance must be hefty. It must be heavy, bitch. She's getting something out of the deal. You don't switch up like that for no reason. You don't switch up like that and all of a sudden become selfless and and giving or submitting yourself unconditionally. That does not happen, y'all. It doesn't happen. So this is game. It's finessing. And this is why I say she knows what she's doing. She's getting much more in return than she's putting on. This is a performance for Cam Newton. Nothing more, nothing less. Game recognizes game. And y'all need to stop letting these, these girls go viral and get you all riled up for nothing, okay? Because it's not that serious. She's getting paid. That's it.